removal was scheduled on this 18-year-old high myope with chronic angle closure and uncontrolled pressures and a flat chamber. You can see after dilation that we have a case of microspherophakia. The lens diameter is very small and the AP uh, depth is very large causing the shallowing of the chamber. You can see that the anterior capsule was very difficult to incise because of the lack of zonular tension uh, peripherally. And so it's very pliant and even though I'm using a 30 gauge needle, uh, I still have difficulty initiating uh, the tear. I'm switching to the micro forceps that I can use through a clear corneal stab incision. Uh, this uh, is helpful for two reasons. The profile of the instrument is very small in the setting of a very shallow chamber. Uh, plus, I'm able to really exert very sharply tangential uh, vectors on this capsular flap so that I can control uh, this tear. I'm aiming to keep it on the small side since with the lack of zonular tension, uh, this flap really wants to slingshot out uh, radially and it's very important to complete an intact capsularexis uh, in these cases. Having done this now, I'm using 4-O-proline uh, iris retractors, only I'm hooking the capsularexis edge uh, to give me support uh, basically replacing the support that a normal zonular ring would afford. After hydrodissection, I'll be able to aspirate this lens uh, using bimanual IA instrumentation through the paracentesis sites. One advantage of this is that uh, I can keep the irrigating, uh, excuse me, the aspirating port as anterior uh, as possible facing away from the fornix and the posterior capsule because the uh, capsular bag is much more pliant. I can also switch hands to get to the subincisional cortex and as you see this cortex being removed look at how the posterior capsule is very lax and it really wants to follow the cortex into the uh, tip which again is why uh, with this bimanual instrumentation we're able to keep the aspirating port facing away from the posterior capsule. Now we're going to re-expand uh, the bag and prepare for a Sioni fixation ring. First I'm going to place an ordinary capsular tension ring and even though the size, the diameter of this bag uh, is very small, we know that uh, the ring will simply be compressed and the two eyelets will ultimately uh, be overlapping. We'll remove the capsule retractors now to place the Sioni variation of the mortar ring so that I can suture fixate it uh, to the sclera. I'm going to introduce this with two hands. Uh, the uh, eyelet can still go through the clear corneal uh, incision and I pre-placed my, my 90 proline suture through the uh, eyelet. Uh, getting the trailing haptic in is a little difficult, so I'm going to use a hand-over-hand -hand approach and use a Sinsky in my second hand to make sure I drop the trailing eyelet into the capsular bag. And then I'm rotating this complex so that it is uh, facing the oblique quadrant where I plan to scleral suture uh, the ring. This is 90 proline with two straight trans scleral needles. Using a 25 gauge guide needle, I'm first bringing the needles through my cataract scission out through a clear corneal incision that's directly opposite the site for scleral fixation. Uh, this will allow me to introduce it ab uh, interno into a guide needle. So I put a little more OVD uh, in the sulcus. Uh, this is a 25 gauge needle as a guide. It's passing under the iris but over the anterior capsule and now I'm going to pass the first of these two double arm straight transscleral needles into the lumen so I can uh, externalize it in an ab internal fashion. I know exactly where the exit site will be. The, there's about a one millimeter distance between the two exit sites and the exit is at the base of a half thickness scleral groove. Uh, this will allow me to tie the knot, uh, cut it flush and have the knot retract into the groove 
so there's no chance that it will erode through the overlying uh, conjunctiva, and we therefore do not need to make a scleral flap. We're using 9-O uh, proline here, and this will keep the lens iris diaphragm from moving forward as it's apt to do. I'm going to place a longer than usual foldable lens. The Star AQ 2010 is a 13.5 millimeter overall length into the sulcus. Uh, it's the first haptic uh, wants to go the other way, so I uh, deliver it slowly in this way. And the reason I'm placing this in the sulcus is that I don't think there's enough zonular support for the bag. Uh, it tends to uh, slingshot forward and backward, and so I'm really relying on my haptics to position the lens, and then the intact capsular bag is really going to keep this from falling backward. Let's review the same steps only in the other eye, which was done one week uh, later. Again, uh, the chamber was extremely shallow, the pressure was uncontrolled, and surgery was scheduled uh, somewhat urgently. Same step of uh, making sure that we do the capsularexis using, in this case, multiple iris retractors uh, to fixate the capsule, uh, using a second instrument here to try to uh, bend the ring because it is so large uh, to let this drop into the capsular bag, and then using suture fixation of a Sioni ring on top of this so that the entire um, capsular diaphragm doesn't want to sort of tilt forward where it literally could be captured uh, by the pupil. So uh, I'm now positioning the uh, eyelet in an oblique fashion. Two double arm transscleral needles with a 9 proline uh, will fixate this uh, to the uh, sulcus and then I will place a uh, three piece longer foldable IOL in the sulcus before bringing the pupil down uh, with myocol. And this patient now has a normal depth to her anterior chamber and a normal refractive error.